Well, that's not good. Gee whiz. Good grief. We're not five minutes into our high adventure. And, oh no. Oh no. I thought I just hit some branches. Well, I knew I hit some branches. Oh my gosh. Dude. I didn't even run into the tree. Like, I just hit. Look at that. Like, I mean, it's like tore up. It looks like somebody shot it with a gun. Dude, those are tiny branches. How did you get. Like, that's toast. Like, look at that thing. I almost decapitated him. I've run into stuff before with my drone, honestly. Like, I've hit, like, small limbs. I've hit bigger limbs than that and never had that much damage. Like, that. That's done. Well. I hope that's not an omen for how the next couple days are going. We're about five minutes into the adventure and we already have a casualty. There we go. Shut this off. What is going on, y'all? Minus the drone, taking straight nosedive into the foliage. Welcome back to another high adventure video. Back here on the river, one last time, I've been told by a reliable source that any day now, uh, they're going to start releasing water from the upper part of the lake that feeds into this river. And once they start doing that, the uh, the, uh, the water levels, I mean, the water levels on this river will lies, rise literally like three, four feet. So we've, uh, we're on a ticking time bomb, really, to uh, when this thing is actually going to be unfishable. So we're taking one last trip here to fish it out and enjoy it one last time before it all gets flooded out and then we're pretty much going to be done till I don't know probably like next summer or something like that here's what we're going to do today though check this out look at this we have some sweet camping spots I mean look at this got nice fire pits I actually just fairly recently discovered this whole area let's see they've got one two three four five five uh five spots oh this is nice look at this look at this so somebody came down and uh obviously left all the garbage in here and then they started to burn up ah yes Smokey has to be very displeased with this they started burning up oh here's what happened somebody drug a big log over here i'll bet put it over the fire and started burning the retaining wall of the fire pit I think this bench is mine because I don't have one over there so we'll drag this over here in just a minute but you've got all these sweet little camping spots here right on the river the river's literally like 50 yards that way and I thought you know what for the last send-off this year for fishing this river it's been a great river it, I've pulled my personal best flathead out of here this year personal best smallmouth out of here so we're gonna do a little hot tent camping to honor this river and all the fun we've had here give it its send off the proper send off i feel like and then um move on to greater and better things hopefully better and greater greater and larger whatever you know what i'm talking about all right guys brief break in the action to give a big shout out to the sponsor of today's video the Varla Scooter Company. I am currently riding their off-road Eagle One Pro scooter, and I'm here to tell you guys, this thing is a blast. Eagle One Pro comes equipped with dual hydraulic brakes and an electronic anti-lock braking system. Combined with 1,000 watt dual hub motor, this delivers exceptional acceleration and performance for a thrilling riding experience. And with its high capacity 60 volt, 27 ampere hour lithium ion battery, the Eagle One Pro provides an extensive range of up to 45 miles on a single charge. This scooter also has enough torque to climb up to 35 degree slopes and hills, has a max payload of up to 330 pounds, and can reach speeds of up to 45 miles per hour. Varla also designed the Eagle One Pro to be able to be folded down into a more compact size, making the storage and transportation of your scooter a breeze. So click on the link in the description below to get your hands on the Varla Eagle One Pro and make your next off-roading experience like none other. <sighs>
All right, I think we're pretty much set up for our next two days. I've had a lot of people asking me about this little portable grill uh, for outdoor fires. I do actually now have a link in the description below to this. Check this out. Oh, God, our nice little tabletop area. In fact, actually, we got some food stuff here. But we better pack away because there are plenty of otter, mink, obviously raccoon. So I'm gonna cook it still. I'm gonna make sure all this gets put away. Got some vegetables. Pop those out here in a bit. Snacks and such. Some of my spices. Don't want anybody tearing all that up. And the nice thing about this is this just zips up. I'll have a link to this as well. And I'll probably have a link to the tent as well. The tent and this are both made by King Camp. Um, I've had uh, some sponsorship dealings with them in the past. And so far, I like the stuff they make. So if you want some of this, check it out. But there you go, look at that. Zips all up. Keeps all the little critters out of my food. Well, let's go take a look at our digs for the next couple of days. Oh, here, let's put this on the hot stove. There we go. Perfect, that's our chimney. Here we go. Who's gonna look? <laughs> got my mat, it's still unfurling. Got a seat, got our little mini fire stove. Opens up, that's gonna be for tonight. Piped right out the top. We've got our small wood here for the stove. We'll have to chop some of that up here in just a bit. But that thing right there, that's gonna keep us warm through the night, especially since we don't have our uh, electricity so I can't run a little heater at night so this is gonna be really nice tonight when it gets down to thing I think it's like 31 tonight so we got the hot tent set up but here you go plenty of room I love that I could stand up in it like I can't even reach the ceiling ah oh, exactly what we need for what we're doing like just perfect size allows me to be comfortable while I'm out here filming and doing all the crazy stuff we're doing so I think we're just about set up though I think it's just about time to go and get out on that water. It is an absolutely gorgeous day. It should be beautiful the next couple of days. It's supposed to be sunny today, cloudy tomorrow, before the rain rolls in. So I think we got here perfectly, but Camp is set. We're the only ones here. I kind of love that. I don't know what, what, why, why I enjoy that so much, but it's kind of fun like doing your own thing by yourself and not having like crowds of people around. I think today we're gonna start off a little catfishing and then we'll move it to the bass fishing either later on or first thing tomorrow when it's cloudy or that should be a little bit nicer conditions for the catfishing. But we've got the 12 foot Hobie kayak ready to rumble. So let's get it untied. Let's get down there. All right, so I was gonna run really quickly uh, up to the gas station uh, to go grab some bait for today. Check this out. We've been stranded here because this train had to stop to let the other one go through and we've been sitting here for like 15 minutes. I think we might actually get to move. Yo, so look at that. Wait for it to go by. I think this is the one we've been waiting for right here. But like, goes all the way down. What's terrible is like the end is just right there. It's like 100 yards down. He was so close to passing, but I guess he was just waiting for this guy, which is probably a good thing. You don't want two trains to run into each other, but uh, hopefully we'll get out of here soon. So, so far we're about an hour into the trip and we've had a drone bite the dust and now a train delay. Hey, we haven't even caught on the water yet. I'm a little nervous now to go on the water, to be honest with you. Hopefully things turn around when we put a line in. Oh, oh, it's moving. It's moving. There she goes. Come on. Oh, there it is. It's the end of the train. Hallelujah. Freedom! So long, ya bum. Woohoo! We are free. All right, back at the old river. This is what I've got for catfish today. Catfish bait, I should say. Just a chicken breast. I've seen people use these before. I've actually never used it myself. I've seen people use like chicken liver, but not just a regular chicken breast. I was kind of far away from any bait shops. So I thought, hey, we're just gonna give that a go. Plus, uh, I figured the catfish probably won't be too picky, right? <sighs> Packing relatively light. Don't need a whole lot of stuff. First thing I notice here at the river, it's definitely up a little bit. It's up a few inches from where it's been and the water's moving a little bit more than it has. So maybe that'll be a good thing. 
a little a little more stained it's still pretty clear but it's not quite as clear as it has been in the past and sometimes that ultra clear water can make for a little bit more difficult whoa fishing this hole right there all right we are out and floating yeah definitely a little more stained i think that's going to help us actually in the next couple of days we're going to head up river find us a nice little channel that we could drift and bump this uh, chicken breast along the bottom so i'll get you guys up there in just a few Phew, here we go man kind of nice to get that long paddle out of the way because that's probably going to be the longest hardest paddle that i'm gonna have to do this whole trip going up this river especially where they're letting a little bit more water out right now but whew, finally made it I brought this rod along because I thought about fishing for some brim and catch us up for bait, which we might do, but not up here. The water's just moving way too fast. I have to try to find somewhere else to do that. We've got our big Drift King rod here. Big egg sinker. I think it's like a three quarter ounce. That might be a one ounce, actually. That's probably is a one ounce. Let's see our chickens coming along. That sucker's still frozen solid. Dang it. Things don't thaw like they did about a month ago. Let's see, Let's see if I, no, oh, that's actually, that's not terrible. Get a big chunk off like that. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna stick him on like that, I think. I think we'll just do that right there. Big old chunk of chicken. Oh, I'm too shallow, need to back up a bit. We're gonna drift this. And how we're gonna do that, we're gonna get up here in the current and we're gonna drop this to the bottom and just let it bump along the bottom. All right, we're gonna try to stay pointed in. I'm gonna just drop it right down like that. I'm gonna wait for something to hopefully take it. We're just gonna hopefully drift right by a catfish. And hopefully something will just slam it. I'm gonna just feel a lot of bumping like I am right now. You see that rod just boom, boom, boom. That egg sinker's just bumping along the bottom. But when a catfish takes it, hopefully it'll just boom. Oh, there it is right there. See that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> You guys see that? How he just hit that? Hey, little channel. Let's pull off over here. Kind of going for that reaction strike when you're bumping that bait along the bottom. He just he just popped that good. Woo! And as always in these rivers, these fish are just a, usually a little bit more active, even in the cold water, because they have to be because they're fighting the current all day. So you can usually find. A few nice active fish like that guy right there like that that is good eating i prefer the blues but eh, i'm not picky not picky today okay that's a good start right there it's a good fish go ahead and hook him up right back here let's tie him onto the kayak i don't want to give him that much leader stay close by the boat there we go nice little pound and a half maybe two pound cat and he left the bait for me thank you good sir First fish on the chicken breast, ladies and gentlemen. That's a first for me, actually. Oh, there's one right there. See that? Oh, no! Dude, what? I didn't get him. How in the world? Golly. Boy, I don't miss a lot of catfish bites, I'll tell you that. Especially when it's floating like that. Shoo. All right, we're heading down to the next pool. Kind of surprised I only caught one and missed one in that top pool, but... I don't know, I've never fished this river this late in the season, so maybe it does just slow down quite a bit. Drop in right about here. That's fairly deep. There's one, there he is. Oh my gosh, see that? Oh, oh golly. Oh my gosh. Shoo! That's what I was waiting for right there. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. Oh, that's a big old blue cat. Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 whoa. Oh my heavens. Jeez Louise. I was telling y'all, if we get smashed by a big cat, it's gonna be game on. Can we get, try to get over here by the shore? Woo. Oh, that was awesome. That was epic. Oh, look at this stud. This is a stud fish right here. Come on, nice little sandbar over here. Now stay out of that wood. Oh, dude, that thing is a beast. A winter blue after that chicken. Oh my goodness. 
This is as big as I caught out of this river so far, especially if it comes with blue cat. Oh Lord, have mercy. Dudes, that's what you call a kicker fish right there. Oh, come here, I'm gonna just have to reach into that mouth. Hook looks like it's good and solid on the side. Look at that toad. Oh my goodness gracious. Dudes. Oh my gosh. Look at the mouth on this thing. You know guys, those catfish, they sit in this river right below this dam and those turbines in that dam spin, spin, spin. Stuff goes through those turbines, gets chopped up. All kinds of fish, bait, you name it, other catfish. And these big old toads like this guy, they sit down there and they're just lying in wait. Lying in wait for stuff, chunks of stuff that look like that right there to come rolling down the river and they ambush it. And they don't really need to do much ambush because it's already cut up. But they just sit there and wait for that stuff to go overhead and they Oh my gosh. That's probably, ah, oh, oh, that's definitely the biggest blue cat. Holy cow, I pulled out of this section of river. I don't know if it's gonna be my personal best, but I kind of underestimated the size of it when we were first pulling it up. Holy smokes. I kind of don't want to bring it in the kayak, but I want to weigh it. Let's see. Ooh, ah. Let's see here. I'll go ahead and just drift back. That works. That works. Ugh, sorry, I got to stand up for this. 27.73. So basically 27 and three quarter pounds. Oh my heavens. <laughs> this wintertime action. You know, this is that time of year, now through about February, we can get some absolute oinkers. <laughs> Woo! I think that's the biggest, well, that's my biggest blue cat out of the kayak for sure. Not the biggest cat out of this river, caught a 30, what's that, about 32 pounds flathead. But that, that's just a big old pig, dudes. Good Lord, have mercy. Oh, there we go. What a fight. What a good time. These river fish, man, too. These river fish, that's what's up. There she goes. Look at that. It's, it's shallow. It's like maybe three feet deep right here. I wouldn't be able to tell if she was there or not if she was just sitting still. This lower pool paid off. That's where that big one was lurking. Not up close to the dam. She's just a little bit, a little bit further down. Oh, there's one. Oh my gosh, right there. Right there. <laughs> Just came back to where we started. Is that a, no, I mean another channel. Is that another channel, is that a blue? Hey, wait, wait, wait. That's my blue I'm after. Hey, there he is. Come here, baby. Came back to where we launched, y'all. Fished a few more pools. Thought, you know what? I'm gonna go down just a little bit. And just drift a little bit past the launch site. Just see if we can get one more, because I kind of like one more. And popped this blue right here. Oh, that's a nice one, guys. That's a real nice one. That's about eight, nine pounds. That's right at the top of where I like to keep him. And we keeping that. He's going on the stringer, 100%. Ah, oh, there we go. You know what we might do? That guy, that's gonna be a lot of good, good meat. Oh. oh, shoot. He just got me good in the thumb. got me real good in the thumb oh ah I got like a hole in my thumb right there from the guy just got punctured really good it was a good thing it wasn't anywhere else oh all oh, that hurts that hurts oh my gosh ah oh. mmm oh that that's gonna smart that is gonna smart really good oh Oh my gosh. Ah, he just punctured me. I could see down into my, like, into that meat of my hand. Mm. <sighs> deep breaths, deep breaths. Oh, that, you know what? We'll put it in the water a little bit here. Water's nice and cold. I haven't lost any movement in my fingers, besides the fact it just hurts like a mother goose right now. Oh my gosh. Whew. 
I'm, I'm feeling a little nauseous after that one. We're gonna get over to the bank here. <sighs> his spike on his, uh, on his fin, he popped up and I mean, he just crammed it right into my hand. I don't care about anything else right now. <sighs> just need to make it to the bank here. Ugh. <sighs> Get homie right there for just a second. <sighs> uh. All right, all right. <sighs> oh my gosh. Mm. I need to get some antiseptic on this. I am that my hand's probably gonna swell up is what's gonna end up happening. Almost feel like it is already. Oh, he just he got me right there. Right like in the in that soft part between your thumb and your index finger. Oh man. Oh <sighs> Okay. I need to get some water, some ibuprofen, or some Tylenol. I think I've got Tylenol. And I need to put some Neosporin on this. <sighs> got some ice on the hand now. <sighs> I think I'm beyond the getting sick stage. That's good. I The thing that got me was that uh, that barb on that catfish. That thing had to probably go in at least half inch into my hand. And when I when I stretched the skin out on my thumb, like I could see just a hollow hole all the way down. And that, that was just like, you were not meant to see stuff like that. Got some Tylenol here. Oh. Ah, this hurts, man. I didn't see it go in. I just felt it. It felt like somebody basically took a hammer and just bam, right on my hand is what it felt like. And I, and I thought, I thought the fish just, just hit my hand. And I looked down and I see a hole in my hand and it was like, Ugh. you know, I got fortunate because those, those things, especially with those small catfish, they have barbs. It's fortunate he didn't get in there and then just start thrashing around and it got caught in my hand. It could have been a lot worse. It was a clean puncture, but I always carry a first aid kit with me. For some reason, I ziplocked this one closed. You could tell I haven't had to use it. I think our fishing day is done for day one. Day two to be determined. I just don't know what this is going to do. What's this? Antiseptic towelette? That's what I need right there. Get some antiseptic on it. Because that, that's like, right now, that's my my main concern is I don't want this to become something where it's like, you know, it gets worse than it should have because we didn't take care of it because we are dealing with a fish and germs and bacteria from that. <sighs> ah, ah, that stings. Ugh. Triple antibiotic ointment. There we go. That's what I need. That's what I need. Here we go. I'm just going to take some of this gel here, squeeze it onto the hand. Right there. There we go. Just like that. Alright, so we've done some antiseptic. We've gotten some triple antibiotic ointment on it. Now, really, I'm just going to wait and see, like, what happens from here. Does it swell up? Does it get worse? Is it just painful now and it'll get better? We've taken ibuprofen, or I should say Tylenol. I can move my hand I, and all my fingers. I feel like that's a good thing. It might just be a really bad puncture. You know what I need? I need another jacket because it's getting chilly already. Sun's starting to go down and just feel a little chilled. I may as well be warm and in pain <laughs> than cold and in pain here. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try to get a fire going here. I wanna kinda see use my hand or see if I can use it as much as I can just I want to figure out if we can keep going or if I need to put a pause on this thing I think that catfish heard that he was gonna go in the fryer and he was like nope 
I ain't going down without a fight. Thinking maybe a fire will feel nice, get us warmed up a little bit. Maybe help improve the mood. I don't know. Okay. Ah, I can't even unclamp that. Here's where we're at. Got the kayak, all my stuff brought up. I can definitely feel the Tylenol kicking in because the pain has gone down quite a bit. I can tell my hand is swollen though. See my ring finger? <laughs> There's no way that ring is coming off. Which, I guess that's just the body doing its natural function. So, it's not as swollen as I kind of thought it might get. Keeping an eye on the skin around it. What's odd is, is that like, even my forearm hurts, which I guess kind of makes sense because like all those muscles and tendons and stuff, right? Like, run up and down your arm, so. If something got skewered, I guess it only makes sense that probably that whole area is going to hurt. So I've got the catfish tied up down at the river. We're going to leave them there. I don't trust myself to try to fillet anything right now. I feel like I feel like that would be a really poor choice, a really poor life choice right now. I did, however, bring stuff to make spaghetti. I was super excited. We were going to fry a catfish and make spaghetti over the fire but um i guess we're just gonna have to wait on the catfish but we are gonna attempt to try to make some spaghetti i'm gonna keep it on the wound it feels good to kind of stay busy so let's go ahead and get some supper going Whew, let's try to turn this camping adventure from hell around here get grief i mean we caught a nice catfish but at what cost right <laughs> All right, first thing we're gonna do is I've gotta get some sausage cooked up. I'm only making enough for myself, so we don't need a whole lot. So we'll just do maybe like a third of the tube, put it in our skillet. That's a nice sage sausage. This is my favorite way to make spaghetti. To heck with the ground beef, throw sausage in it. Do yourself a favor, y'all. You're gonna love yourself if you do it this way. I'm just saying. Hear me now, believe me later. Where is it? In here somewhere. Yeah. Aha! Prego Farmer's Market. Roasted garlic. I'm gonna just go ahead and pour that right in there. That's our base. Oh, come over here. Grab our onions and peppers. Just gonna dump all that right in. Normally I like to add a bunch of other stuff to this. A little bit of sugar. Throw some cavenders in there, but I just didn't bring all that stuff, so it's kind of a basic spaghetti sauce tonight. Probably throw some salt and pepper to taste, call it good. One thing I discovered is that even though you use the tomato paste, right, throw some fresh tomatoes in there as well. It just gives it a super fresh tomatoey taste. A lot of times people will do like canned tomatoes. Nah, I skip the canned tomatoes. Do fresh tomatoes. It makes a world of difference, I'm telling you. Go ahead and drop that all in there like so. Perfect. Stir that around in there. So I discovered I have some of this frag out flavor all-purpose seasoning. Yeah, it kind of smells like cavenders actually. So we're gonna just go ahead and sprinkle some of that in there. Actually the the uh a little bit of water's gotten in there, so it's kind of hardened in there a bit. Let's scrape it out. Uh, got some, what is that? Barilla? Barilla rotini? Come over here. Water's boiling. This looks about right there. Let me stir that around. Oh, you know what we need to do, actually? We need to add a little bit of oil to the water. That way the noodles don't stick together. There we go. Perfect. That should take about seven, maybe eight minutes for those to get nice and soft and supple. I'll set that up here. Come and take a look at our sauce. We pulled the sauce off for a minute. It's bubbling up nicely. Yeah, look at that. 
mood is improving upon the sight of food. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Plus, when you take two 500 milligram Tylenol, that also helps as well. Feel plenty good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's looking good. That's looking good. This might be one of the fanciest meals. It's not even that fancy. It's just a regular everyday meal, but one of the funnest meals I've cooked over the fire, though, so far in my YouTube career. That's looking good. That's boiling up. Whoa, careful. Now, we don't need any more accidents. Let's stay back. Oh, Got to chop some of this stuff up into smaller stuff for our little hot stove in there. I had to do that before I lose light. All right, noodles are ready. Just poured off all the water. I think what we're gonna do, you know I think what we're gonna do? I wanna just pour it right over the top. Here we go. <laughs> Look at that. Fresh spaghetti over the fire. Woo. Probably made a little much, but I don't know about y'all but I can down spaghetti like like three, four, five bowls without even breathing hard. I love spaghetti. Hands working pretty good. Got a good grip on this. Definitely not putting as much torque on my thumb right now, but it's fine so far, seems like. <laughs> Look at that. What do you got to say to that? Oh, it smells divine. Let's get some food here. My thumb has earned it. <sighs> Ooh, my goodness. Well, I'll tell you what. That's a crazy first day. <sighs> Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Lord, thank you for keeping us in safety out on the water. Lord, I just pray you'd help my hand heal and nothing extra come from it. Lord God, I just pray that it would heal up nicely. And Lord, I just thank you for the beauty of your creation, that we get to come out here and enjoy it. We're thankful for it, Lord God. We just thank you for our many blessings, and may you bless this food to our body now. Through Jesus, I pray. Amen. You know, it's only like 4.30 right now. It's this dark out. This is crazy, man. That's ridiculous. Mm, this is absolutely fantastic. That fresh tomato just sings in this dish. Oh, my gosh. You know, something really weird happened the first like 30 minutes after I got popped, I developed like almost, I felt like a rash right here and it was itchy. And I don't know, don't, don't catfish have like a little bit of poison in that barb. I don't know if it was from that. And then something else I noticed, it seemed like a couple of these veins were red. They just looked red. And there were like some on the front and the back of my hand. There were definitely like, I've compared them and there was definitely, there was definitely some red there. Like, like they had just looked a different color. And so that's really what kind of got me concerned at first. But everything looks normal now. Like veins look normal. I don't, it doesn't itch here anymore. It's not, it's not as, I thought this was going to like puff up big time. But so far, not bad. Could I hold a bait casting reel or a fishing rod and fish tomorrow? That's going to be the question. Can I fish? I might just have to pop a couple more Tylenol and get a good night of sleep and find out. Oh, Whew. the Crocs. I think it's time to go and button this up for tonight. Got all my stuff I'm gonna need for in the morning. It'll be cold tonight. Whew. I think the first thing we're gonna do is turn our attention to this guy right here. Open the flue up here, that'd probably be a good idea. Put some pine cones. Start. Alright, if I remember correctly, I get a little smoky in the tent when we first do this. Something's lighting up in there. Ooh, hot. Well, we got the burn in the first aid if I need it. Let's not use that, shall we? Yeah, there we go. There we go. I see you. I see you. Let's 
start fitting some slowly bigger pieces in there. I think that's pretty well lit. We're going to go ahead and close this. Oops, excuse me. There we go. What we might do is open this up actually a little bit as well. Just until that fire gets going. Whew. Let some of this smoke escape out this. Oh, there you go. You kind of see in the light. I don't want to sleep in that. So we'll get all this cleared out of here. And give it give it five minutes. The smoke will go out the top of the stack there, or out of the top of the teepee, and then uh, probably leave this open so it can escape out this way as well. All right, guys, look at that. Got a nice flame going on in our hot stove, and it is warming up fast in here. Smoke's just about gone. Now there's something we're gonna do here, though. Check this out. See these little grates right down here? That's letting air in from the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually adjust that. I'm going to close those to about halfway. And it's going to start cutting off the supply of oxygen to the wood. And then, see this flue? We're going to close that just a little bit. Watch what happens to the fire. Did you guys see that? See how the flame like slowed down? What it does is it actually slows the burn of the wood. Because there's not as much oxygen getting in there. So it makes our wood last longer. So I turn that about 45 degrees, cut that down to about half. There's kind of a, a nice song and dance you got to do because if you shut it too much, smoke will start coming out of this little guy. But looks like we got no smoke. I see that flame has slowed way down. And now that is just going to become a nice little furnace to heat all this area. So you can see already from the light, pretty, pretty non-smoky in here already. So I think it's time to go ahead and kick off the shoes get this all buttoned up I've still got this open behind me but I think all the smoke is pretty much gone or most all of it the rest will just go out the top but it's time to get cozy you're a bunch of dogs like fighting and howling in the distance that'll really put your mind at ease fortunately I have to say there is something kind of comforting comforting about this hot tent it's like super heavy canvas you couldn't just like force your way in I've got like three zippers to the entrance there's like no way you could just like bust in really fast. Obviously, I always bring a gun with me. I even brought this in just in case. I had to I had to think fast. But I always sleep with a gun next to the pillow when I'm out on these adventures. Because you just don't ever know. I don't want to end up on Dateline, man. There we go. That's probably going to be pretty sore in the morning. We're going to have to warm that up and work it. I've, I've kept, it, kept it mobile this afternoon, evening. Kept it kind of worked out, but... After sleeping on it at night, it's probably probably going to get pretty sore. Ooh, uh, I think it's time to go lights out. We're going to be up plenty of times. Filling the wood and the stove <laughs> just so we can stay warm at night. I like it going in the morning too, so like, I don't know, maybe we can make some coffee over it or something first thing. But anyway, I guess I'll just see you guys first thing in the morning. Stay warm for me. morning everybody hand seems like it's doing okay in fact feels a lot better than it was yesterday which is kind of surprising but I think maybe that sting just kind of wore off from the initial puncture we are brewing up some coffee I got some bacon going on our little stove thought we'd go ahead and cook breakfast up inside the tent this morning since it is whoo, it is chilly outside I thought you know what Kind of the less time I have to just hang out out there, the better. Might as well stay in the hot tent, right? How's that look? Oh yeah, that looks real good. <sighs> Nothing like a little fresh eggs and bacon to start the day. Oh, beautiful morning. The eggs and bacon when you're camping just hits different. We're going to go ahead, get this guy loaded back up. We'll leave the uh, catfish rods here, but we just have to take them down the trail. 
The river's right out there. Oh, you know what we should do? We should see if our catfish are still alive as well. Hopefully they're still on the stringer. Well, I see the stringer. Steady as she goes. I see two catfish there. Good, still on the stringer. Do, 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 do. Clip that tagline off. Ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing some high adventure videos history in the making. I went out, look, I bought myself a bait casting reel. When I was here last time and we caught our personal best smallmouth, which is what we're gonna be after today. We're gonna not only hit the place we hit last time, but I wanna explore a little bit further down river than we've ever gone. But I came to my realization as I was sitting here trying to throw plugs that first cast, Oh, and I got a backlash. How about that? But it came to my realization that it was like, I can't sit here and use spin, spinning reels the rest of my life if I want to try bass or get back into this bass fishing. Like, I need something that can handle the heavy duty, um, the heavy duty lures. And so I decided we're going to get us a bait casting rod reel setup. And we're going to come out here and apparently get tangled the first time, which seems like it makes sense right look at that nice little nice little backlash oh hey but we're getting it out i've got a feeling this might be a little bit of a learning curve today but we're gonna try our best all right so before we head down river or keep heading down river we gotta stop by the old hunting grounds this is where i pulled that personal best smallie for myself out here about a month ago Make sure nobody else is lurking around here. Is that a fish? That's a fish right there. First one. First one. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You can see that? Airborne. Oh, nice river smallie. Nice river smallie. Come on, baby. Pretty fish right here. Look at that, <laughs> yeah. First on the bait caster. Out of way to break in the new bait caster. Oh, how do I get a stick in the boat? Oh. Come on. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Beautiful river small. You know what? With the luck we've had so far, I'm not gonna try to lift this thing, especially with both those crank Bait hooks right in the mouth. Look at that. Yeah. Woo. Grab her right there. Look how fat that thing is. Good grief. Whew. That's a two pounder right there. Guarantee it. Nice two pound smallmouth on that jerk bait. First fish on the bait cast reel. That's not a bad way to break it in right there. That's awesome. There you go. What a beautiful, beautiful river smally man. That's what I was after. And bigger. And bigger, but that's that's a good first fish of the day. Good grief. Sweet. Here you go, girl. Good fight. Man, that rod, that medium heavy rod handled that like a champ. Look, she's still upset at me. Sorry. There she goes, though. She goes, look at that. She's just cruising along the bottom down there. Oh, that's so cool. That is so cool. Man, this hole, this hole had another one. And let's see if there's another one. Oh, right by a rock right out there. Oh, that was fun. Still hitting the jerk bait. That's good. Let's go ahead, head down river. We're actually gonna pull these up. Ooh, got some rapids we gotta make it through. Pull the old paddle out. Let's go try a different section here. I'm gonna go down and explore a little bit this way. There we go. Actually having a couple more inches of water running through this river helped make it through that a little easier. That was kind of nice. I saw that last time I was here and I thought, hmm, that could be tricky. But amazing the difference two inches makes. Check this out. We got this nice ridge. Runs all the way down. I can see the... Uh, Kind of the riprap that it's creating. I can't really even see the rocks. I just see this riprap line that runs way down here. If we're gonna get anything, I feel like it'd be right in here. 
fishing a lot of good looking oh there's one right there i was gonna say we're fishing a lot of good looking stuff down here there's one hey now we're cooking oh come here baby come here well she didn't hit it very hard i was gonna say i've been fishing a lot of good looking stuff in this lower section Ugh, grab her right there nice little one one and a quarter pound smallie but we're fishing a lot of good looking stuff that's almost good eating size right there yeah we'll drop her back in but i'm just not getting a whole lot down here been at it for a good 45 minutes now had one bite and uh that was a terrible cast and and uh that fish right there she hit it like right under the boat i've been really surprised because i'm seeing a lot of good like out like rock outcroppings and stuff just nothing nothing doing oh uh, yeah we've run into a slight problem Ooh, and apparently i ran into a rock as well there we go so i'm breaking out the spin reel because my bait caster the mono line just keeps breaking like it legit like here here's here's how much it's happened four times now four times we're just like all cast and also just beep this is pure monofilament line i thought i read somewhere that this was like what you wanted on bait casters but i mean this is just getting ridiculous i've only got like maybe 25 yards left on that so we got to put it away so i don't i don't know is mono not good it's 10 pound monofilament but i could have sworn i read somewhere that like that's what you wanted to use so fortunately i brought the back up the spin rod which is you know obviously kind of my bread and butter but i don't know somebody help me out i don't know what i'm doing wrong there it's just four different times i cast and it just beep and it just breaks like it just breaks like right in the middle like i'll get a like a nice long cast but it'll just break off i'm like uh what so i don't know you know we could sit around and complain about it or knuckle down go to plan b which is what we're going to do here with the spinning rod all right guys We've made our way back up into the main basin. Not a whole lot of fish down there. We spent a good hour and a half and caught one, which was kind of disappointing because there was a lot of good looking ground. I've switched though, little tried and true red rattle trap. We're gonna hit some of these spots where we threw the jerk bait. Well, where I attempted to throw the jerk bait. Mostly I was dinking around with my, <laughs> getting, getting tangles out with my uh, bait caster. But we're gonna throw this out here, do something a little bit different. Hit some of these spots on our way back to camp. There's a fish right there on the, come on, baby. You know, I rolled through here with the jerk bait. Nothing hit. Wow. Came through with the rattle trap. Something took it. Another smallie. Ah, eh, pick it up a little bit. Not a big fish, but a fun catch on a slow day. Shoot. Man, just all these smallies are just fat. Uh, Already gotten a, yeah, yeah. A little nervous after the old catfish incident yesterday. Really pretty bronze color to that one though. Kind of lightish, good colors. Nice fish. There you go. There's one, another one. Oh, there you go. We got a jumper. No, no. Did he, did he, did he just look like he threw it? But it looked like he, ow. Dude, this is awesome. This little, little rattle trap. It's getting it done. It's like two fish in the last ooh, 10 minutes. I am terrible at keeping this fish down right now. <laughs> Come here, you. Had a girl. That's a nice smallie. It's another nice smallmouth bass. She's hooked real well. Maybe we needed to copy the uh, crawfish pattern. Ooh. Nice and easy. You good? Look at that. It's probably a pound and a half, pound and three quarters. Another beautiful fish, man. Ooh. Look at that. Yes, sir. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fun, man. River smallmouth fishing. That kind of hurts the hand, but we're making it happen. Pretty fish. Man, what is that? Four for four on the smallies? No spotted bass, no largemouth. 
There's a bunch of smallies feeding in that early winter. All right, there you go. <coughs> right in the eyeball. There you go. Hey, that was fun. Good fight. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get on back. I gotta clean a catfish too. I wanna fry up some catfish. I think my hand feels good enough. Actually, I'm surprised. I, I thought for sure this was gonna swell up like an egg. I thought I was gonna have a big old lump right here, but I feel pretty good right now. So I think we're gonna go ahead and fillet one of these catfish up. Let's get back to camp and fry up some catfish. All right, here we go. We have our blue catfish, which we have killed, obviously, before we start just filleting them up. Now, some of you might think that I'm eating this guy and it's purely out of revenge. That is not the case. Blue catfish tastes delicious. Also, it is kind of out of revenge. Of course, if I put myself in his position, I would have probably liked to stick whoever was going to kill me one last time before I went. So, you know what? He died with honor, really. All right, swing this off to the side here. Normally, I kind of just pile all my stuff up, right? And we just make a fire. Not this time. We are going to try to make a nice little teepee. We're gonna put some real effort into this and make it look real classy, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna start with some pine cones. Actually, I wanna nestle these kind of upside down. Yes. We're gonna go for that TP look. There we go. All right. Got some twigs here. All right, we've got the smaller stuff on right now. My wood's progressively getting larger and larger. So the little stuff inside, big stuff on the outside. This is really starting to come together. It's starting to look like a real wood TP here. If I do say so myself. All right, final piece, or pieces, I should say. There's a family up here trying to take family photos in the park behind me with little kids. I know how that is. There we go. What do you guys think? Look at that. I don't know if I'm getting real TP out of this. I don't know, some Native American tell me, did I do all right? I guess we gotta light it up and find out, but that's probably the most time I've spent setting up a fire. I'm pretty proud of it, I'm not gonna lie. Let's just hope it starts now. All right, here we go. Can I light it off this? That was a fail. All right, try it again. I'm trying to do this with one hand. I almost did it. Oh, hey -oh. Now, the idea, my boys is to light the pine cones. It's kind of hard to get to the pine cones, I'm not gonna lie. There we go. Build, baby, build. Oh, that's hot, hot. Ooh. Oh, and pine, the pine cones are letting me down right now. I'm not gonna lie. I've never had so much trouble lighting a pine cone. What in the world? This isn't a great start. Do they sound wet? Why do they sound wet? Oh, hey, wait, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. I see more flame climbing. Oh, you see that in there? See that in there? Oh, come on. Come on, everybody. Don't do me dirty, you little dirty pine cones. Where, where's it going? Why does it look like it's going out? Oh, wait, there's some right there. He's hanging on. Come on, little flame. You can do it. Ha <laughs> ha, well, what do you know? Look at that. That little spot right up there, I think may have saved us. You know, because that's how you make a fire. You start up top and let them... <laughs> the flame work its way down to the bottom. Uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. I think we've officially got a fire going. Look at that. Yeah, now, now it's catching. Good grief. Remind me not to put my trust in pine cones anymore. That was dumb. Fortunately, the last, I, literally like the last pieces of wood saved the day that we'd split. All that. Oh yeah, now we're cooking. Man, does it, does it, doesn't that just look like something out of a magazine right there to you? That's beautiful. I'm going to be sad when it all kind of crumbles. That's a good looking fire. Look at that. Beautiful, clean, blue catfish strips. I did strips instead of nuggets this time because I don't know why. I just decided to do something different. Got that right. Our flour mix there. It actually got quite nice today. It was, it was cold last night, much chillier yesterday.
There we go. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that's done. Final piece right there. Woo! Oh, that's what I'm after. Look at that. Good looking plate. We're going to move this off now. And I am re. Oh, second there. There we go. We're reheating the last of our spaghetti. Added just a little more sauce, a little bit of oil in there. Yeah, that's good. That's good. We'll go ahead and pull that off as well. Sweet. There you go. Check it out. Check it out. We got fish. We've got pasta. And some fresh tomatoes to go along with our fish. There we go. Look at that. Oh, man. Don't tell me this isn't a high adventure right here. Put that right under there. Top it all off <clears throat> with Born in the Carolinas Pepsi. <sighs> Amen. Amen. All I've got is that little scar right there. For all that fuss and hubla. Oh, you know what? I've got some bruising right there on the other side. So I guess that kind of proves it went in pretty deeply. But for all that fuss and hoopla yesterday, like that's that's all I got for it. Oh, man. You have to take my word for it. That hurt a lot. There we go. Mmm. Kidding me? That's like perfectly golden brown. That's like how you want your how you want your marshmallow to look when it comes out of the fire. Oh, man. Oh, fresh tomato with it as well. Uh, I want a little bite of pasta. A little bite of catfish. Together? Oh, that's really good. I got tomato sauce in the fish. That's a good combo. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can pour this correctly, look at that. That is a good sign that we have done this adventure right. Oh yeah, Swiss Miss for the win all day long. The only thing this is missing is a few nice little round fluffy marshmallows on the top. That would be the perfect cup right there. I think with this perfect hot cup of cocoa, that is an excellent way to end the last couple of days. Y'all, thank you so much for hanging out with me in our first hot tent camping video of this winter season. Hope you enjoyed the adventure, and as always, I will see you in the next one.